और परफेक्ट राइट वेलकम एवरी वन आई एम सो एक्साइटेड फॉर दिस मंथ मास्टर क्लास इट्स बिन सच अ जर्नी यू नो थैंक यू सो मच आई नो मेनी ऑफ यू हैव बिन अटेंडिंग दीज मास्टर क्लासेस एंड बिफोर दिस ईयर यू नो लास्ट ईयर एंड एंड नाउ देर बिन मोर रेग्युलर दिस ईयर आई बिन डूइंग दम वंस अ मंथ एंड आई एम जस्ट very honored to be receiving these divine downloads you know to help us be on this path of mastery and i want to remember mastery from the ego's perspective is one thing from the soul's perspective it's really what we're mastering is becoming a disciple of our soul right becoming a student of our soul becoming and then and also becoming an ambassador of our soul here in the earth plane. And so today is all about emotional sovereignty in your career. Soul training. It was a long title, but that's what that's what wanted to be. Soul training for emotional career for not emotional career, career emotional sovereignty. And the way it it unfolded for me it was almost like I, I think I was actually working out <clears throat> and i was thinking of i don't know how you know sometimes when you're not thinking about your soul then you start thinking about your soul and i was and i was like oh like my soul is like my personal trainer and so many things and i was really thinking about emotions and having sovereignty that that word came together with emotions and it's like okay what does that mean emotional sovereignty particularly in your career obviously you can apply this to any area of your life but as my focus is your career your life's work it's really thinking about all the emotions that come up when you're up leveling your career your business when you are taking the sharing of your soul's medicine to the next level emotions come up that is very very normal what is the challenge is not letting those emotions the fear of feeling the emotions stop you from taking consistent action and i'm going to break all this down i have a lovely powerpoint for you because it's really important <clears throat> there's certain things there's certain words there's certain certain sentences that i'll say that our ego structure can misunderstand so when i say take consistent action the ego structure can hear that as meaning take action all the time never stop keep going keep going hustle 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 that is not what i am saying that is the ego structure i say that because so many of my clients or women that are drawn to my work have had you know are hard working they they do a lot they give a lot and here they are at this this crossroads of like oh i'm still i'm still meant to share more but i want to do it in a way that blesses me i want to do it in a way that feels like ease not that that ensures you'll never feel challenging emotions that, that in fact that's what this whole master class is about but when i say take consistent action i mean that you do not let the fear of feeling a certain emotion stop you from taking an action step that your soul is absolutely saying you're ready go do it you know it's like we're in the nest and your soul's like come let's go and it might be sending an email it might be making a phone call it might be sharing your artwork it might be putting a post on social media i mean it can be the smallest little thing it can be the biggest little thing it it doesn't really matter to our soul if it's a soul guided step it's equally important it's like in course in miracles they talk about there's no order of difficulty in miracles which is one of the things that's the hardest to wrap your mind about around and i just got in this moment are the oversoul the soul saying it's the same thing with soul guided steps if your soul guides you to take a step they're all equally important to your soul so if your soul guides you to take the step of go post that on social media right now or your soul guides you to quit your job i know our ego structure might be like oh this one's a lot more of an important step but that's not how our soul sees it so we are going to jump in and begin 
I'm so excited to have you here. I'm just going to see who's here. Jan, Jill, Jojo, lots of J's. Jan, Jill, Jojo, Kimberly, Michelle, Roxana, Suzanne, thank you so much. And I know we have like 24 people signed up. So thank all of you who are watching the replay. And I already tuned us in, but let's do it together as well. Just a short invocation. So take some nice cleansing breaths. We crossed the Equinox portal yesterday. So we are in a new season. And I invite you to really embrace that, really embrace the new beginnings, the, the new energy, the new cycle, embrace that energy. And take a moment to see your roots going down your legs and then deep into the heart of the earth. And we just ask your soul to help you release anything that's unnecessary. And then breathe in this beautiful energy of alignment, of flow, of sovereignty, freedom, liberation. In fact, I'm hearing the question, what are you freeing yourself from? What are you becoming sovereign from? So what, what is it? You know, ask your soul, what is it that I, and you might know right away, you might be like, I know what it is specifically around your career, specifically around your creative projects, around sharing your medicine. What is your soul saying? Liberate yourself, become free of this. And if you want to share it in the chat, share it in the chat. So as we breathe in that sovereignty energy moving up, 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 all the way to the crown of our head and landing in your heart as you bring the palms of your hands there or just your awareness there. And I just keep hearing that sovereignty, emotional sovereignty. Just let that word, let those words really sink in. What could that mean from your soul's perspective? What is emotional sovereignty? Why is it so important? Why is there a master class on this? Why is Mother Mary and the ascended other ascended masters, you know, Green Tara, Kuan Yin, Jesus, Baba Ji, all these amazing ascended masters, why are they interested in us having emotional sovereignty? Because you all know this when as soon as you're going to teach a class, you go through some extensive training on it. And so I've been going through a lot. My soul has given me a lot of content, <laughs> a lot of practice leading up to this, this webinar. So in your heart, ask your soul, what, what does emotional sovereignty mean for me? Why is this important? What will this help me achieve? What will this help me create? And it's okay if in this moment, because I know I haven't explained it yet, but it's okay if you're like, well, I don't really know what emotional sovereignty is. It's okay. Just ask with that open mind. Ask yourself, what, what will this help me? If I master emotional sovereignty, how does that help me? How does that help me help others? And with those questions in your heart, we welcome your guardian angels, the archangels. We welcome, I already named so many of them, but the ascended masters, those masters who lived a human life, they understand how challenging and painful some emotions can feel. So we welcome those beautiful ascended masters that are dedicated to humanity and that are here as your allies because they know how important your soul's medicine is to the world. So just name them again. Welcome, Mother Mary. Welcome, Kuan Yin and Green Tara, Kali Ma and Lakshmi and Jesus and Baba Ji and Buddha. Isis and Hathor. Mary Magdalene, so many. These ascended masters that love you unconditionally. And are not interested in any, in any sort of codependent relationship with us. They are sovereign and they are here to help us on our journey of embodying our sovereignty. Hmm. 
And so before we close this invocation, ask your soul another question here. What are you here to release? Say, what am I here to release? Beautiful soul, what am I here to release or to lay down or to let die already? I know that can sound violent. It's not death and rebirth are normal parts of life. So it's like, what is it that your soul's like, just let that die, let that end. Let it go. And then asking, beautiful soul, what am I here to, to receive, to welcome, to allow, to embrace? And with those answers swirling in your heart, whether you heard them yet or not, with gratitude, we bring the palms of our hands together. We bow to each other and our own heart. And we begin. We open the temple doors with a namaste. Namaste, everyone. So if you want to share anything that came up for you as far as what you're here to release or let die, I just kept hearing, let the dead bury the dead. I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> it, was like, it was like, let it die, whatever. You know, we've just like, done the work, done the work, done the work. And sometimes it's just habit that has us still keeping it. Joel, thank you. Release pain and fear of vulnerability. Thank you so much for that. Receive compassion and sovereignty. Yes. Awesome. Valerie, release past limitation. Thank you so much. Love that. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah, I really feel that. I feel... I feel how important that is for all of us to do this. So what is going to happen today? Receive serenity. Thank you so much. Is I'm going to share, I have my little agenda here, but we have, we do have a, a PowerPoint to go with it. So just to kind of give you an overview, there is going to be teachings. I'm going to integrate little meditations and inner journeys throughout. And of course, energy work and all of that amazingness, right? We're going to talk about emotions. And I know, I won't even say anything, emotions, how they can be the fuel or the block. I'm going to give you some terminology to really, you know, kind of be with just to, so that we have a common language when we talk about this. Of course, I'm going to talk about what exactly does career emotional sovereignty mean, what it is, what it isn't. Really talk about the your soul's perspective on your emotions versus your ego's perspective on your emotions. I'm going to share some little illustrations. <laughs> Talk about the Ascended Masters. Share a simple but powerful practice that will make sense when we get to that part. And like I said, integrate meditation so that you can have a conversation with your own soul about this. Right. I have the, these teachings, right, that I'm sharing. And your soul has like will highlight for you or ping for you or be like, yes, pay attention to this, or oh, this is what it means for you. Right. So, like that's what you're here for, to hear that as well. Let me just read some of these. Michelle, release guilt and receive courage. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, Lucy, releasing fear of being found wrong and be condemned. Oh my gosh, Lucy, thank you so much for naming that. That's such a, and I didn't write it in my little illustration, but that is such a common thing that comes up. This often my clients will say it as the fear of making a mistake. Oh my gosh, I'm going to teach a class. And what if I make a mistake? What if I say something wrong? What if I, it's such, it can be such a deep fear. Thank you for that. Jojo release grief of loss of biological family. Yes. Thank you, Jojo. Yes. Sophia, mastery of remaining in sovereignty when I open to my genius feeling nature. Oh, yes. What equals what to feel and what to let other people handle themselves. Yep. And I would say the spoiler alert is any of other people's feelings, we're going to let them handle with themselves. <laughs> like that's what we're all learning, right? That that's what sovereignty means. Now, we can be a teacher. We can be an example. We can create sacred space for others. We absolutely can be in compassion. All of that is mastery and takes so much courage. But none of other people's feelings are for us to deal with, handle, process, or any of that stuff. That's sovereignty right there. All right, so let's get started. 
Thank you so much, everyone, for your sharing. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Not sure where it went. Okay, here we go. Hmm. No, if hmm. all right, here's always the, the question Can you see the PowerPoint? And can I see you telling me that you can? Because right now I can't. <laughs> okay, here we go. Nope. Nope. Hold on a second. Okay, I see it. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Sophia. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. Soul training for career emotional sovereignty. Yes, you're in the right masterclass. Even if you somehow ended up here and you're like, what? This wasn't what I signed up for. Your soul brought you here. So we trust that this is where you're meant to be. Um, always have this, you know, the legal... Notice, I really want to emphasize, and I'll emphasize it later too, that as we talk about emotional sovereignty, I am not suggesting in any way that we, that part of this journey does not include therapists, professional support, psychiatrists, coaches, all of that. I have, you know, my therapists, my coaches that I have had have, have been invaluable. So I want to really ensure that you understand that. We'll talk about it some more. And that, of course, this does not take the place of medical or psychological care. There's my little bio, which you can read later. Okay, remember, a master masters the basics. When I talk about master classes, our ego can get either really inflated or mostly for my clientele, it's more like, <gasps> right, like me, kind of like, wait, I'm not a master. That seems so big, but we're all, we're on a path of mastery. And how, what is the path of mastery is mastering the basic, the foundational teachings. That's what mastery is. In the ego world, it's meant to mean often like, oh, you know, a ton of information, you know, very important people, you have all of the um, training and the the validation, right? The badges of honor that, call, that say you're a master. That's not what this is about. Training, of course, is essential. I'm not dismissing that. But this is about mastering the basics, practicing them, embodying them, continuing, practicing, taking the steps. And mastering the basics requires implementation and practice. There's no other way to say that. In order to master the basics, it's not just about taking a, a webinar or a class. It's literally implementing and practice. And I've said this before, when I share these teachings, you don't have to implement all of it. Maybe for, you know, there's one thing you take out of it that you're like, okay, this is a thing that you're still saying, just start with this, start with this. Don't let yourself get overwhelmed. Okay, we've said this before, 2024 is the year to come out of hiding, right? Now, in a sense, we're all hiding. And, you know, every year it's more revelation, reveal yourself, reveal yourself, reveal yourself, right? And this is the year to share your soul's medicine, your soul medicine, soul's medicine, purest, most authentic expression yet. When I talk about purest, I'm not talking about any sort of religious thing, right? It's like meaning the, the least ego and most soul, right? Okay. So this is the thing, your emotions can be the fuel that quantum leaps your career evolution, or they can be the biggest obstacle to your career expansion, okay? So we get to choose. They can either be the fuel or they can be the obstacle. Like we, we Part of our sovereignty is we get to choose. And when we're human, and we are human, right? we have a soul, we're, we're a divine being having a human experience, in the earth world, there are emotions that so we're going to feel the vast, the, the spectrum of emotions. That is normal. And when you're talking about sharing your medicine, your soul's medicine, wow, is there going to be emotions that come up? 
But that's what I, that's why I have my coaches. That's why I coach my clients because it's not about what action steps you take, honestly. I mean, that has a place, but it's all about your thoughts and your emotions that then generate the action that you're going to take and how you're going to take the action and what result is going to happen, right? Okay, so one of the things I wanted to talk about is your emotional landscape. Because when we talk about emotions, it's we you know, right? That if let's say you're gonna teach a class and you're feeling so nervous, it's your first time teaching it, or it's your first time teaching it in a certain venue, or you're gonna teach it differently, or whatever, or it's new people and you're nervous. Nervousness might be what you feel the most. But you also have a whole bunch of other feelings, right? You might feel excited. You might feel um, really, you know, in service. But then you're also really nervous, right? You might have a fear of being rejected, right? There's like there's like a landscape. It's like a weather, right? So it's a combination of emotions you're feeling at any given moment. It's like the weather of your inner world. Okay, your emotional landscape. And when we do our inner journey with our soul, when we do the meditation, that's one of the things that, we, as I was preparing, that the oversoul was wanting me to do, that the Ascended Masters was like, okay, take an inner journey to really become familiar with your emotional landscape. Because part of this, remember, is losing the fear of feeling certain emotions. So speaking of that, what are the emotions you most resist or try to avoid feeling when you're sharing your soul's medicine? I really want you to think about that now. Okay. Like, in fact, I'm going to stop right here. What are the feelings? Maybe it's one, maybe it's more than one. You most avoid feeling. Now, you're going to, we're going to go inside for a moment to get that answer. But this is what I want to say. Many of you here are very skilled. You're therapists, you're coaches. You've been doing inner work for like ever and ever and ever. So for you, there might be feelings that really freak out other people. And you're like, I totally, I can be with that. I've practiced it so much. That does not, I, I'm, I'm really good at that. Awesome. But I can guarantee you, there's something, there's some emotions, right? We all have them. If not, we'd be ascended masters already, right? What is it? And so if you're having a hard time finding that answer, like I said, I'm going to do a little journey right now, I'll dip into the soul plane to ask this question. Think of, of an action step that is hard for you to take in your career or has been hard for you to take or you've been postponing or you've been putting off or maybe you did it once and now you're like, oh my gosh, I never want to do that again. And think of okay, what is the feeling you're trying to avoid? Right? Okay, so let's go ahead and tune in. So I invite you to close your eyes. Take a few breaths. And invite your soul to be here with you. Of course, we know your soul already is. And perhaps imagine yourself taking a step in your career that makes you feel a little, you know, that, that just feels challenging. Maybe it's a step you've been putting off. Maybe it's a step you've done, but you're like, Ugh, I don't know if I want to do it again. Maybe it's a step that you're just like, nope, I'm not ready yet. Nope, I'm not ready yet. But just, just look to see. Or you can simply just ask your soul as you're sitting in front of your beautiful soul, okay, what is the emotion that in this moment, that right now, in this cycle of my career growth, 
I avoid feeling the most. And write it down. Okay, let's come out of that. And let me know if you can share in the chat what came up for you. So interesting what came up for me. I wasn't even going to do it. And then I was like, oh, okay, might as well ask too. I mean, and do it right now with you. What came up for me was responsible. I've never thought of that. I mean, as a feeling I... I've been avoiding feeling or that is in some way holding me back from sharing more of my medicine. And it was this feeling of like, I don't want to be responsible for more people or I don't want to be like, I, I hadn't, it, it was, it was interesting. I'd never kind of tapped right into that. So Joe's saying sadness and anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, what is, you know, sometimes the common ones I've, connected with with my clients has been disappointed or even worse sometimes disappointing right they absolutely want to avoid feeling like they've disappointed someone oh yeah Kimberly you literally just said <laughs> exactly feeling of disappointing others that can be one of the most painful things yeah Valerie, you avoid frustration. Yes, Jojo, being judged, feeling like an imposter. I don't know enough. Yeah. And so Jojo, you're, and, and I think in April, I'm going to really do a masterclass on thoughts, but you gave us some really good thoughts here that are causing the feeling of being judged, right? I'm an imposter. I don't know enough. And so when those thoughts are in your head, the feeling that comes up for you is judged. Michelle Love, which hit me kind of hard. <gasps> yes. Please feel free to share more about that. What I'm getting from that, Michelle, is I remember years ago, some of you know this, when I was doing the Guadalupe gathering that I do every every year, um, I was preparing for it for Our Lady of Guadalupe and like in December of a few years ago. And she was, and I always ask, you know, I'm praying and I always ask like, okay, what? What message do you have for us? And by us, I mean, you know, the healers of the world, the priestesses of the world. And she said, don't be afraid to love more. And I was like, hey. and I felt this like, oh my gosh, I have had this fear of like not wanting to open my heart more because I had parts that felt if I love more, I'm going to be hurt more or, or I'm going to be more vulnerable or I'm not going to set boundaries or I'm going to go into rescuing. I mean, there were all these fears tied up to it. I don't know if that's kind of what where yours is going but that's what it reminded me of lucy avoiding feeling that i don't give give what they want avoiding their anger after and losing their approval and love oh my gosh lucy i so understand that yes so it's like their judgment right so it's like they're feeling judged right feeling disapproved of feeling unloved feeling rejected and it's amazing how all of those things come up when we're, when we're going to share our medicine. So as thank you so much, everyone who shared in, you know, those of you who are watching the replay, as well as you do this with us, it's like then noticing, okay, what steps am I not taking because I'm avoiding feeling that, or maybe you are taking steps, but perhaps you would take bolder steps or more vulnerable steps if you weren't trying to avoid that feeling. So for example, when I heard responsible, I was kind of shocked, like what? And it's not like I'm thinking, oh yeah, I haven't been taking certain steps, but I can absolutely feel where there's this kind of like, like I'm, I want to open the door for more people to find me. And there's a part that's like, nope, <laughs> that's more responsibility. That's more people to take care of. That's more. And of course, that's coming from an old paradigm because this isn't about taking care of anyone, right? This is, again, sovereignty. But I, so I can see that. So if you have fear of being unconsciously misaligned 
and not being aware of that. Oh, yeah. So if your thought is, I'm going to unconsciously be misaligned, and I'm so I'm, I'm guessing what you mean is like not aligned with my soul, or when you have that thought, the, the feeling that comes up for you then, Sophia, is fear, right? So then that's the, the feeling for you, yes. I know, I remember helping so many of my clients and even myself going through this of not wanting to cause harm to others, right? It's like, oh, it has to be really perfect. I don't want to hurt others. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I literally just said this. And that. Yes. Yeah. And what's so interesting about that is most of the time, what causes the most harm, especially when we have the deep prayer to help humanity, is holding back our medicine, right? It's like holding back from sharing the medicine that came to you from the divine. I'm, I'm obviously not just talking to Sophia here. I'm talking to all of us. That's what harms humanity the most. So, but of course, Michelle, a postage note I had for a while randomly fell off my wall. It says, let me love you. Ah, uh, yes. Michelle, this is important. All right, so let's continue. Thank you for your answers. We're going to continue. Okay. Um, to just, I honestly don't know why this happens. That's like the chat disappears, but if somebody could just let me know if you can see the chat, the chat, not the chat. If you can see the, where does it go? Hmm. All I can see is my screen. For some reason, it's not showing me. Okay, people have answered. Yes, okay, thank you. I think there's just like a delay or something. All right. Okay, so career emotional sovereignty, the ability to compassionately keep taking soul-led action regardless of the emotional landscape that arises so that you can share the purest expression of your soul's medicine. I know that's a long definition, but it had to have all those combinations. So again, what is it? Compassionately. That's very important because a lot of you are warrioresses. You can hustle, you can keep going no matter what. I have that ability of like, oh, born out of a lot of struggle in my life where I could just like, just keep going, just keep going, right? And it has served me in a lot of ways and it has also now not <laughs> helpful. So it's really important to catch that compassionately, keep taking soul-led action, not ego-led action, not like, oh, I got to do a million things because I got to help everybody action, soul-led action, regardless. So no matter what the emotional landscape is inside of you, you can keep taking soul-led action because that's going to lead to you sharing the purest expression of your soul's medicine. That is career emotional sovereignty. Do I do this all the time? Absolutely not. No, this is a practice. This is a process. There's some times where I can do it much easier than others. And there's other times where I still get like bleh, kind of flat on my back. Like, oh my gosh, this feels so heavy, right? But when we know these things, when we start to create a language for it, when we start to set the intention and understand the soul's per perspective and the ego's perspective and understand why it's essential and important. All of this is incredibly powerful and helpful. Okay. So again, what's career emotional sovereignty is you can keep taking those soul led steps compassionately. So not like, oh my gosh, it's so dumb that you feel embarrassed. Just keep going. That's not compassionately. Okay. You know, for me, you know, if you connect to any particular ascended master, you know, I often, you all know Mother Mary is one of my 
my closest ascended master mentors. And I often think about sometimes it helps. Sometimes if I'm feeling really bad, I can't in that moment access like, okay, mother Mary, talk to me. Cause I just, and I'm going to show you a little diagram of what happens inside that makes it harder to hear. But what I can do sometimes is think of like, okay, when mother Mary was a human, you know, in that lifetime that we know about, you know, when she was the mother of Jesus and we know she was such an advanced being already, right. She was preparing for her ascension. And I know she mentored a lot of other people. And I think about like, how did she mentor them? How did she talk to them when they kept coming to her with the same issues over and over and over I know she wasn't like oh my gosh rolling her eyes at them and thinking could you get over it already right that wasn't her so sometimes that will help me like oh that's right this is what what emotional sovereignty is for myself that I can mentor myself in this way with compassion and continuing to take those soul-led soul -led action steps and I've made such improvement in this when I first started my business I could literally have something happen as simple as, let's say I promoted a class, you know, back then it was all in person. So, you know, put up all the flyers, did all the things, whatever, whatever, all the steps and like no one showed up and I would, it would just bring up like so much for me, right? Like shame and defeat and discouragement. And it would, it would take a while, not like a year, but it would take, you know, if I wasn't going to see my coach or my therapist in two weeks, it'd probably be two weeks that I was really drowning in that or trying to buffer it. And I'll talk about that later. Now it's so much shorter, right? Like now it's like it, the process is quicker. I still have to work on it, but okay. Career, emotional sovereignty. Your soul is very interested in helping you master this because she knows that this will strengthen your ability to share its medicine in the world and will eventually lead to your ascension, by the way. So this is important to know that your soul wants to help you with this. And everyone, I'm just going to put, I'm not talking on the phone. I'm just going to put my, um, I just realized I cannot see the time when the PowerPoint is on. So I'm just putting my clock on my phone so I can keep track of that. Okay. So again, your soul wants to mentor you with this. Your soul wants to help you with this because your soul knows, oh my gosh, when she, as she practices emotional sovereignty, I can help her more. She can share more of this medicine in the world. And this is what's going to lead to her ascension. Okay. So um, career emotional sovereignty does not mean resisting your emotions, repressing your emotions, buffering when you feel hard emotions, or even over, trying to overcome your challenging emotions. So what is resisting your emotions, right? And, and I'm not going to go too much into this, but just give you like a little bit. So resisting, the example that's often given, if you think of yourself in a swimming pool, or even in the ocean and you're trying and you have a ball and you're trying to push the ball under the ocean, right? Like resisting, right? It's kind of like shame. Nope. Nope. I don't want to feel it. 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 Right. You're just like pushing it away, pushing it away. There's that resistance, right? Oh, I don't want to feel disappointed or I don't want to feel that that client was disappointed in me. I'm just not going to deal with it. But there's like an act of pushing on it, like repressing literally some people, I've been, I've always been very hard at repressing, very bad at repressing my emotions because I'm such a sensitive person. Like I literally wear my emotions on my body, right? It's like, I, I've i never understood that, like how somebody could be aware, unaware of what they were feeling. I, I was jealous of that because I was like, I would love to be able to, you know, now as some people call it compartmentalize, right? Kind of like, nope, I'm going to put that over there. Now, of course I know, I'm human, so there must be some emotions I've repressed. But overall, my problem for me, it's been more like they're like all over me, right? I'm such a sensitive person that it was really this like, like, oh my gosh, they're all over me. And it's, it takes so much for me to navigate through them. Because I want you to understand, like, the place I am in now is not where I started. It was very hard for me to, I mean, if I, if I, as a 19 year old had been given 
a vision of some of the things that I do right now, I think my 19 year old would have been like, there's no way I would never do that. You know, would have been because she was so shy and timid and so affected by other people's emotions and had was kind of drowning in her own emotions. Buffering is basically, you know, when you feel about a challenging emotion, whatever that is for you, and you're going to take some action to cover it up, right? To not feel it. And again, you know, my people who are drawn to my work are very uh, smart, intelligent people with a lot of experience. So a lot of times what's been really interesting for me to help my clients with is sometimes you can buffer with taking really, really, uh, what is it called? Like loving action. So meaning that, for example, let's say your soul gives you, you're, you know that your soul saying, hey, teach this class. But it's bringing up a lot of feelings. Now, other people, maybe they would eat, overeat, or do other things. And I'm not judging that because like we all do that. But there's a point sometimes where we reach a point where maybe that's not what you do. Maybe you go and you help someone. You're like, oh, I'm going to go volunteer over here. Or, oh, I'm going to go help my client or help my relative. or And it sounds so lovely and it's so beautiful. It can be missed as what you're actually doing is avoiding feeling the feeling by taking this action of helping others. And although it's very lovely, ultimately it stops you from helping the masses in the way you're meant to help. And I can please know that when I'm saying you, I'm speaking about all of us because we all have done this, do this. It's it's very normal, but it's important again to have the language and understand it. And in overcoming, I think that's where most of my clients, most of my the people I work with and myself is the biggest um, growth edge is to not go into overcoming. So meaning like overcoming is almost like bypassing, like, all right, I know I'm feeling disappointed, but let me get back on the horse and just keep going. And, you know, and sometimes that's okay if that's genuine, but a lot of times it comes from like, Ooh, I know I'm feeling disappointed. Let's not feel that. Let's just keep going. Let's just kind of get over it. Or it's, it's, it can be very subtle when we're impatient with ourselves, when we say things like, oh, I should be over it now, or why do I keep going through this? Or why am I saying this again? Why this is taking me so long? I should be further ahead. That's all signs that you're in that place of trying to overcome your emotions. Remember what I said, emotional sovereignty is, it's compassionately being able to take soul at action. It's amazing how that is sometimes that's just the only thing that's missing for this kind of great, amazing success and momentum that you're looking for. Okay. What does it mean? Career. So I talked about what it doesn't mean. What it does mean, I think, okay, is normalizing the challenging emotions. So meaning like it's normal. Like, of course, it's normal that you're, you don't want to feel vulnerable. It's totally normal that you don't want to feel like you're going to cause harm. It's totally normal that you don't want to feel judged. It's totally normal that, you know, you don't want to feel uh, overwhelmed by people's emotions. Like, it's really important to normalize this because what happens when we don't is that you can literally think, well, this must mean I must not, I'm not ready. Or this must mean I'm supposed to not take any action steps right now. Or this must mean that, yeah, I just need a lot of inner work before I can do this. And now, of course, there's divine timing. You're, maybe your soul is saying in another way, saying, hey, this is what you need to do right now, not this. But it's also very powerful for us to know it's normal to feel all these things absolutely normal. It's normal to sometimes not feel inspired when you're going to share your soul's medicine. That doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean you're not supposed to do it. It just means you're human, right? So it's really important to talk about these things and normalize it. Under also, emotional sovereignty means understanding your soul's perspective on emotions. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. Being able to continue sharing your soul's medicine when you're not feeling quote unquote positive emotions. Again, remember, like what I said earlier, 
many of you here are very skilled at emotional intelligence. So sometimes it's even harder for those of us who are that way to take the teaching because we can really be like, oh, I totally can still be with my clients even if I'm feeling horrible. Like that's not a problem for me. And that may be true, but maybe for you, it's in another area. Maybe it's, yeah, you totally have that mastered, but it's about putting yourself out there in different ways. Oh, I actually am being guided to teach this class. Oh, I kind of have been putting that off. I have all this stuff coming up, right? So we want to be really honest with ourselves with compassion, right? Of like, where is the growth edge for you? So eventually emotional sovereignty does mean losing the fear of hard emotions. And that there is so much freedom in that. Like I know for me, feeling disappointed is some is a really hard emotion for me to feel. It just brings up a lot of inner child wounds. It's almost like I feel disappointed and then it like brings up all this heaviness and that doesn't even have anything to do with my career. But that fear of feeling disappointed, it would, even if it didn't stop me from doing certain things, it's like it would add this pressure that was unnecessary and unhelpful and not helpful, right? Because I was trying to avoid feeling disappointed. And I'm not saying I'm completely done with that. Like I'm, I still have layers to go, but it's so much better because I've practiced feeling disappointed <laughs> because I've allowed myself to feel disappointed and have compassion for myself when I feel disappointed. Not because I pushed it away or made myself wrong for feeling it, but because I allowed myself to feel it and get my soul's help with it and my coaches and all of that. So that now I don't have that fear so much anymore. And I can tell you that it makes my teaching and my offer so much more powerful and strong when I don't have that in the back of my head of like, I wonder who's going to sign up. I wonder if they're going to like it. Ooh, I wonder if I'm going to be disappointed. Like when that is now mostly quiet, I can focus more on like, okay, how do I add value? What is my soul wanting me to teach? But that couldn't have happened until I felt the disappointed and lost the fear of feeling it. Like I just know, well, yeah, maybe if it doesn't go like I want it, I'm going to feel disappointed. That's okay. I'm going to feel disappointed. I'm going to be with that. Right. So what does it mean? Becoming masterful at navigating your emotional landscape. We're going to talk about that. Being able to continue growing your career or business when you feel challenging emotions. It's really what it's about. It's like continuing to add value in the way your soul is guiding you to add it. Not in the way that's almost you could do it in your sleep. Right. If you're like, well, I literally could help someone if my leg had just fallen off. I could still help people. Awesome. Great. But that's not what I'm talking about. It's like what the areas, your growth edge, you know, where is it for you? And we're going to go in to talk about that. Okay. Hold on. So yes, I think I'll share this and I'll pause to, to share with each other. Your soul's perspective on your emotions. First of all, your soul is not negatively affected by your emotional landscape. This is really important. I might show you my little drawing right now. That means when you're mad, when you're sad, when you're feeling disappointed, when you're feeling like a victim, when you're feeling judged, when you're feeling defeated, when you're feeling lack, when you're feeling scarcity, when you're feeling whatever, it your soul is not affected negatively by that. So when we use sentences like, oh, my soul feels really heavy right now, it's actually not accurate. Your soul does not feel heavy. You, your human self is feeling heavy and is having a hard time connecting with your soul because of that heaviness. This is really important for you to know. It's a gift. Thank goodness our soul is not affected by these negative emotions because then your soul can is not overwhelmed by them. Your soul is ready to help you. Okay, so this is really important. Now, however, your ability to access your soul is affected by your emotional landscape if you're afraid of it or judge it, really notice that. 
So it's not the negative emotions that affect your ability to connect with your soul. It's what you think about them. So if you're like, oh, I hate all these feelings, that creates a barrier. If you're judging it, what's wrong with me? Why do I still feel this way? That creates a barrier. And again, don't judge yourself for doing that. That's very normal. I mean, that's the story of my life for many, 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 many years. I'm still healing that. It's humanity's plight. It's not just you. So also your soul knows that every time you experience a challenging emotional landscape emotions and you practice accessing your soul despite this, you strengthen your connection to it. I know that might have been a little confusing, but I'm going to explain it. And before, let me just see what is after this. Okay, we'll stop right now. Mm. Yeah, let's just do this next slide. So versus what's the ego's perspective on your emotions? Either seeks or tries to avoid certain emotions to keep you safe within your comfort zone. So a very simple way to think of this. This feels good. I want to do more of it. It feels good to help a lot of people. I'm going to do more. It feels good to keep saying yes to all the requests that people bring to me. I'm going to keep saying yes. It feels yes to keep rescuing these people that come to me to rescue them because then I don't disappoint them and they like me and they love me. So I'm going to keep saying yes to this, right? It, it So it feels good. I'm going to do more of it. It feels bad. I'm going to do less of it. Whoa, I have to set boundaries. Nope, that feels bad. I'm not going to set boundaries. Oh, I'm going to put myself out there and people judge me. That feels bad. I'm not going to do that. Oh, I'm going to teach a class and somebody's going to question me on it and be like, uh, you don't know what you're talking about. Definitely don't want to do that. I'm going to do less of that. By the way, I've experienced all these things. It, it's a very spiritually immature way of moving through the world. And when I say spiritual immaturity, it's not a judge. Like literally humanity is, we're trying to move out of spiritual immaturity. Right? So this is really important. So remember your soul's perspective. Your soul sees your emotions as fuel. This is fuel. If they're positive, quote unquote positive, awesome. You feel like you're walking on air and you're like, oh, so yes, I feel abundant. I feel inspired. Oh my gosh, this feels so great. And, and usually it's much easier to connect with your soul. Your soul loves that. But when you're feeling challenging emotions, your soul is also cheering you on, on because your soul knows, oh my gosh, this is it. This is when she can, instead of drowning in that, can still come back to me and pivot and have compassion. This is going to strengthen her energy body and her ability to share her medicine. Eventually, she's going to become a master at this and walk through the world, as Jesus said, in the world and not of it. So your soul is thrilled at both. Your ego, on the other hand, is like, this feels bad. Ew, avoid, avoid, avoid. This feels good. Do more, do more, do more. Like that's what the ego does. Okay, so we're going to stop here. Okay, so I uh, want to just pause here and see if you have any questions. I'll show you a little drawing. Like really thinking about that. In fact, I'll show you the drawing. So, <laughs> so here we have the human and the earth plane, right? This is a pretty dire emotional landscape, but I just wanted to do kind of an extreme situation, right? So in the bubbles, it says, this is really speaking, especially around your career or creative projects, right? Pessimistic, ridiculed, maybe there's anger, feeling judged, scarcity, defeated, victimhood, ignored. Maybe you feel ignored because you're putting your work out there and nobody's saying anything embarrassed, disappointed, anxious, rejected. So there's this like emotional um, landscape of all of these emotions, like these dark clouds. Now, remember what I said earlier. This is not to say that there, oh, how do I rephrase? Let me rephrase this. And absolutely, when this happens, it is absolutely appropriate to reach out for human help, right? You might, just as I have for so many years, absolutely a therapist can help or your coach or some other professional help. So we're not, again, I'm not suggesting that you skip all that and you just do this, right? This is the, but also we need to understand, right? We're divine beings having a human experience. 
So even just, even if you get some sort of mental support with this, if that's necessary, which is absolutely fine and appropriate, there's still the peace of your soul, right? So let's just talk about this situation where it's not like a clinical condition necessarily. It's more like maybe you're putting your work out there and you're just not getting the response, right? Or maybe right now you're in the process, a very challenging process of just healing codependency, right? With clients or your business. And it's like, and please know, like when I say like so many of us are going through that right now. So, and so maybe you're setting all these boundaries and people are upset with you and you're just feeling all of this, right? Now notice your soul in the soul plane, happy face, hearts, 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 radiating its essence. It's not affected by this. But this is where sometimes people get confused. They think, well, it's almost like, I remember when I was first learning this or aware of this, I had a part that was kind of felt like, well, that's nice for my soul. My soul is just up there all happy while I'm down here all miserable. Like, how does that help me? That's not what I mean, right? It's like, remember what I said, your soul is aware of all of this, right? Your soul knows all of this. And it's continually beaming love to you, but it's very hard for us to access it when we're so covered up with this emotional landscape. And what makes it sticky is our judgment of it. Okay, our judgment of it, either I shouldn't feel this way or I should be done with it or this thing shouldn't have happened. All of that makes this just heavier and stickier and stickier so that this veil between our soul and us just gets thicker and thicker and thicker, but not because your soul is far away or because your soul doesn't want to help or because your soul isn't able to help. It's just because this landscape, right? So when I asked you in the beginning, what's the emotion that you try to avoid? So maybe it's not all of those, right? You named one of the, or another one. So just think like, oh, there's emotions. So for, for me, it was responsible, right? So maybe there's this cloud that says responsible. I don't want to feel responsible for people. And somehow this part has made it mean that if I attract more clients or more students, I'm going to be responsible for more people, right? So for me, it's really important now to understand like, oh, that's part of my emotional landscape that is really um, holding me back. So I want to just check if anyone has a question before we do a little journey around this. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Sophia, I have discovered a practice that helps me move forward in the right direction. I asked myself, what is it that I don't want to do? It helps me with coming into present moment and be honest, helps me realize where I stand. Exactly. And so what you can add to that is like, what is it that I don't want to feel, right? It's like, what is it that I don't want to feel? Mm, I don't want to feel disappointed. Oh, I don't want to feel like I let people down. I don't want to feel overwhelmed. I don't, you know, that can also be very powerful because it's like, oh, that is totally connected to the action steps that we take or not take. Thank you, Sophia, for sharing that, Jojo. Today I was frozen, procrastinating, doing action steps for my business my spiritual practices classes today, preparing for spiritual classes. I, I justify my spiritual classes more important. Ah, Jojo, I totally think I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is an example. I, I love that you brought this up, Jojo, because it's an example of getting more training doing consuming right i'm going to just be a consumer of teachings a consumer of content a consumer of things in and avoid taking action steps right it's just like if somebody i'll just say give this example because it's a it's can just be easy to understand if somebody was trying to lose weight and they really wanted to lose weight but of course it brings up a lot of emotion so what they keep doing is taking classes on how to lose weight, right? Like, oh, I'm going to take this training and take this class and read this book 
and listen to that teacher talk about it and take that other class and read that other book. And they're consuming, 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 consuming content, content, content. And some of it might be amazing, but the action steps are not being taken. So if you saw, not just Jojo, everyone, one of my most recent uh, YouTube lives, the, the Rise Up Transmissions was about how the action step is what anchors our soul's medicine. It's what creates heaven on earth. It's the action step. And so Jojo, and for anybody else who resonates with this, like we all do some version of this. For me, it could be podcasts. I'm just going to listen to my coach's podcast episode. There's nothing wrong with that. I love her podcasts. They're so important. They're so powerful. They're so helpful. But I need to really tune in like, wait, am I doing this to avoid taking an action step, like this other action step that I'm really being guided to take? Now, the, the wonderful thing about my coach is that she talks about this all the time. So even if I go listen to her podcast, usually in there, she will say something that I'm like, okay, got it. I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I'm using this as a buffer. Got it. I've got to take that one little action step that I was meant to take. Okay. So Jojo, it's really having compassion for yourself as you notice that. So your action was frozen in action. So then noticing, okay, what feeling am I trying to avoid by not taking action? What is the feeling? You know, I don't know what it is for you, Jojo, right? But, you know, for me, it might be like overwhelmed or vulnerable. Like I know one of my action steps was the post I did on Instagram on Sunday. My soul had been telling me to do that post for like weeks. And that I didn't know I was going to use that picture, but that content. And it, I'm sure you'll read it and be like, why did that take you so long? That wasn't that hard, but there was something about it that was bringing a specific vulnerability. So it was really getting clear that they're like, okay, that's, it's not the 10 steps that my, that my ego is like, do this, do this, do this, do this. It was that one step that my soul was taking, was asking me to take. So Jojo, I would suggest for you and anyone who's resonating with that, just simplify it. Like, okay, one little step, but then really asking that question, what is it that I'm, I'm avoiding feeling? You know, what is it that I'm afraid to feel? What is the inaction avoiding feeling? <laughs> Thank you, Sophia. Okay, so we're going to do an inner journey. Had a lot of content. To see your emotional landscape. And if you have a journal with you, if you like to draw, I mean, look at my drawings. I'm not judging them. I love them, little stick figures and bubbles. So you don't have to be a quote unquote artist, even though we're all artists, but maybe you are an artist. And so drawing is the way for you. So you might be guided to, as we do this inner journey, kind of do a little illustration or put some words down. So let's do that. I'm sorry. Okay. I was being guided to do something. It's okay. All right, so let's close our eyes. You can close your eyes and take a few cleansing breaths. And go into your heart. So maybe you bring the palms of your hands over your heart center. And you see before you this beautiful path. And so you stand on this path, this golden path. Your soul is illuminating it. And as you stand on this path, you realize that you're outside. And you realize that the path has sand on it. And you realize that this path is leading you down to a beautiful ocean shore. And so you're walking on the sand. The sand feels so soft and perfect temperature for you. And you're walking right to the shoreline and it's this beautiful, calm, pristine ocean. 
I know some of you did a similar journey with me a few weeks ago. And this is what our soul wanted us to, to connect with right now. So to see this beautiful, calm, pristine ocean shoreline that you're standing, you're standing right there. You're, you're feeling the sand and you feel a little bit of the water touching your feet. And you're welcoming your beautiful soul to be there with you. And we're also welcoming beautiful Mother Mary and any other guides that you're guided to have there in your space. And then these beautiful beach chairs appear and you're going to sit on it. So I, I see them very colorful. There's like an orange one and there's a like aquamarine blue. There's a magenta one. And so you sit on this beach chair that it's not too, it's not flat back so that you look at the sky. It's like, it's, it's comfortable, but it's enough upright that you can see the water still. And your soul is sitting in the other beach chair. And I see Mother Mary, she's sitting in the other one. And you're looking at the water, you look, you can also see the sky. It's very beautiful and calm and serene. And you're starting to understand, like, oh, this is this is like your soul's um normal state this calmness, the serenity, abundance, because the ocean is so vast, joy, there's this joyfulness, there's wonder, there's, because you can kind of hear these birds and you, you're starting to notice kind of like different um, beautiful sounds, maybe you hear dolphins in the distance and beautiful butterflies. There's just so beautiful and nurturing. And your soul really wants you to take this in, to know that this is available to you at any time. And also absolutely honors and understands that you are one of those brave souls that agreed to become human, to have a human life, to go into the earth plane where there are a lot of emotions, some beautiful, amazing ones, and some very challenging ones, and a lot of in between. And so now, in the blink of an eye, you're in the emotional landscape, your human emotional landscape. Your soul is still with you. Mother Mary is still with you. But notice, just like I drew that little stick figure with the clouds, notice what clouds are in your emotional landscape. Particularly when you think about sharing your medicine with others, sharing your teachings, maybe it's just sharing a social post, a, a post on social media, or teaching a class, or inviting someone to look at a product you're creating. But just notice, maybe there's a lot of beauty, like oh yeah, there's flowers and butterflies, but there's also probably some clouds, maybe there's areas where there's some rain or some little storms. Just, just look at it, just notice it. And take some cleansing breaths, your soul is with you. And you start to notice that as your soul is with you, your soul has this magical ability to create space, create sacred space. 
So if you start to feel like, oh my gosh, this is too much. This is too much. These clouds are too big. They're taking up too much space. Just ask your soul to create more space. So literally this image is getting more spacious. So the clouds look smaller, right? There's more space. Your soul is teaching you how to create space. So they don't feel like they're squashing you. You're just kind of like, oh, I'm creating space. And there's one poofy cloud with an emotion written on it that your soul is, is pointing to. It's like, look at that one. And maybe you're like, yep, I know that one. Or maybe you're like, whoa, I had not even thought of that. But look at that cloud. And your soul, because your soul is infinite and vast and is not overwhelmed by any emotion, stands up and just kind of grabs the cloud and it's like, Phew. so your soul is holding this cloud with this emotion in her hand, whatever it is, sadness, grief, fear, disappointment, judged, rejected, just see what is it. And just notice what that feeling is. It's the feeling your soul is showing you again. What is this feeling, this emotion that right now, for whatever reason, no judgment, you have been most trying to avoid. And so with Mother Mary and Kuan Yin and your soul, just start a dialogue And so ask this question and, and you can write the answer if it helps you to write or remember, we can be in an inner journey and we can write at the same time or draw. Just asking, why am I so afraid of this feeling? And write whatever comes, whether it makes sense or not. Maybe you're like, I have no idea. That's okay. And now you're going to ask this very important question. What thought, what sentence in my head, remember a thought is just a sentence in your head, in your mind, creates that feeling. What thought creates that feeling? And write those down, write down. So if the thought is anxiety, if the feeling is anxiety, for example, then right there with your soul, ask like, okay, what thought do I think that makes me feel anxious? Every feeling is caused by a thought. What is the thought? You're just being very curious. There's no judgment. You're just kind of like, hmm, that's really interesting. What thought? So I'm writing mine down. Maybe it's more than one. What thought? And maybe the thought comes as a question, will I be able to handle it? Whatever it is, just write down whatever comes. And so now that you have that, you have the emotion and you have the thoughts that make you feel that emotion. Now you're going to ask yourself right there with your soul, what emotion would I want to feel instead of this? Instead of anxious, what would I want to feel? 
Instead of rejection, what would I want to feel? Instead of fear, what would I want to feel? Instead of scarcity, what would I want to feel? Instead of disappointed, what would I want to feel? Instead of disappointing, what would I want to feel? Just write it down. What would you want to feel? And notice that as you ask that question, it implies sovereignty, that there is a choice. Oh, I can choose an emotion. And when you choose, now when you write it down, what's the, what's the emotion you would prefer to feel, you would like to cultivate? And maybe it comes as a bunch of words, the different ones, but whatever comes. And now ask, what thought, what sentence in my mind could I think that would make me feel that feeling? So if your answer was joy, it's like, oh, what thought makes me feel joy? Right? thought about sharing your soul's medicine. What thought makes me feel committed or motivated? or loving, or trusting, or abundant, whatever emotion you choose, just, just start to ask, okay, okay, I chose the emotion that I would want to feel. What thought generates that feeling inside of me? And write that down. And so now, and, and please remember, you're going to have the replay, so you can do this again if you need more time. But in this moment, now your soul stands in front of you. And on one hand, she's holding the cloud with the emotion that you've been trying to avoid. And on the other hand, she's holding the cloud with the emotion that you would love to replace this one with. Just look at that. But notice a few very interesting things. Your soul doesn't have a preference. Right? Your soul isn't judging either one as this is the good one and this is the bad one. Your soul is just there with a lot of compassion and understanding. And just let yourself breathe and feel spaciousness. And perhaps start to notice even a slight release or loosening of the fear of feeling the quote unquote negative emotion. Just breathe. Notice what feels right. Do you just let it move through your body? Is it just letting your soul hold it? Just allow what naturally happens is wanting to happen to happen maybe for you it's oh i just have to have compassion for this right now there's nothing to do but have compassion 
Or maybe for you, it's, oh, I need to just let myself feel it. And as I let myself feel it, it just kind of moves through my body and goes into the earth. Or maybe for you, it's just letting yourself even look at it. Like, wow, I've really been trying to avoid that feeling. I'm just going to be with that. I'm just going to acknowledge that. Mm. It'll be different for everyone. And so write down any insights that are coming to you about it. And now, as you look at the emotion that you want to cultivate, the one that you're like, oh, I would want to feel more of this. Again, just notice, oh, what thought helps me feel that? See yourself feeling that feeling as you go through your work day. And notice something to be mindful of. Elevate your choice of emotion. So meaning choose a sustainable emotion. So maybe you're like, I want to feel excited. But then when you think about it, you're like, well, that's probably not sustainable. I mean, we're not gonna always feel excited. That might not be the emotion that actually will propel you forward with the most ease and efficiency. So ask your soul is very wise. So really tune in, okay, what's the emotion that will really propel me forward? I thought it was excitement, but actually maybe it's commitment. I just want to feel really committed or maybe it's loving or connection. Just really tune in. Okay, what emotion? Ask yourself, what is the emotion, the, the spiritually mature emotion that will move me forward in the way I want to move forward in my career and in my business? Maybe it's self-love. notice and if you notice parts arguing that are like no 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 that's not I want this one just have compassion for those parts but see if you can just let whatever the truth is here come forward And if there's any other messages from your soul to say, okay, beautiful soul, anything else you want me to know about this? About sharing my medicine, about the emotions I've been trying to avoid and how I can release the fear of that, about my sovereignty, anything. Your soul is always eager to talk to you. So just listen and write down any messages that come.
And so as you thank your soul and your soul thanks you, look at your emotional landscape. Right, whatever, however it looks, whether there's a few clouds or a lot of clouds. And now that one, your soul's landscape, the one we saw first, that was so beautiful and joyful. I, I can't even put it into words. I'm going to try it, but it's almost like that energy of your soul is coming out and wrapping itself around your emotional landscape. So in the center is your emotional landscape. Maybe there's a cloud that has disappointment or maybe there's a cloud that has sadness or grief or whatever it is. But now you've opened the veil. So now your soul's, that soul plane is embracing it. It's not trying to squash it or overcome it or fix it or anything, but it's embracing your landscape. So that even if there's pockets in your emotional landscape that feel very heavy and you're still learning how to be with it, you notice that around you, oh, you have your soul's embrace. You have this soul's um, landscape embracing your landscape. It's so spacious. So I'm just going to kind of stop talking and just kind of see how it disappears to you. And write down any messages or any little drawing that will help you anchor this in. Just write it down in your journal. And so look at your beautiful landscape, knowing it's perfect exactly as it is, and see your soul's beautiful landscape embracing it or however you're visualizing it. And taking some deep breaths, we bring the palms of our hands together, we bow to each other our own heart, we come out of this inner journey. If you need to write anything down, write it down. If you need some water, drink some water. And I'm looking at what I wrote down. And so uh, the chat is open. If you want to share anything that came to you during this. So for me, the emotion was still responsible. That was the emotion I was trying to avoid. And when I asked a question of like, what thoughts create that feeling of it, it's, so I guess it's over responsible would be more accurate. But the thoughts, the sentences in my head were, I'm going to let them down. They're going to want more from me. I'll never be able to rest. And so those thoughts that were swirling in my head that I wasn't even aware of caused this feeling of over-responsibility, like almost like this drowning, like oh, it's too much. And even though it was very way, way, way in the back, I can see how that was creating, you know, kind of stifling me in some ways, like in some steps that I'm thinking of. And so that was the first part. And then when I was like thinking, okay, well, what feeling would I want to feel instead? And of course that needed to come from me first, letting me, letting myself feel that, that fear of over-responsibility. Like to me, I felt it in my stomach. It was like, was like a droning so it was just like my soul was just saying just let yourself feel it just let yourself feel it i'm gonna pause here let's see uh 
I was trying to avoid feeling my belly hurt. I don't act like they want. I wanted to stop. I want to feel secure and loved. Yes. Yeah. Literally, I was getting ready to say that about my belly hurting, you know, when I was feeling that over responsibility, like, yes, I don't act like they want. I want it to stop. Yeah. And so what's really important here, everyone, it's like, you know, noticing the sentences, notice, just first just bringing awareness to it, right? Like you might not get to the other part yet of like, well, what would I want to feel instead? Because it's very easy for us to kind of want to skip to that part right away. Like, oh, this doesn't feel good. I rather feel happy. But it sometimes it won't be able to be anchored in be, until we're, we get some level of comfort, some comfort level with those with being aware of it and the discomfort of it, right? It's like it's like being comfortable with the discomfort. Right? It's like, oh, so for me, I know, you know, I did get some guidance on, well, I would rather feel loving, connected, committed, but I know I still have to be with those parts of me that are feeling afraid of being over-responsible, right? I, I'm getting the sense that some of that is past life for me, right? So so it's like at first, it's just becoming aware of your landscape. So I'm curious, thank you, Lucy, so much for sharing that. Like what came up for you all when you were looking inside? Like what were some of the, and maybe it felt just very calm, which is fine. You know, like maybe you just noticed a lot of joy or uh, inspiration or desire to share your medicine. Maybe there was just a few clouds, right? That it was like, oh, those felt a little heavier. So just kind of noticing. I'm trying to see. I have my drawing that I'll have to explain. Gentle joy. Yes. Jill, that's very beautiful. Thank you for that. It's interesting that it's both, it's gentle joy. Right? There's a, a specific vibration to that. And the thought is, I'm on the right path. So when you have that thought, I'm on the right path, that emotion of gentle joy comes up. Right, And so for Jill, I know she, you shared in the beginning, I don't remember now what it was, but whatever that feeling that you'd been trying to avoid, right? it was like, oh, just creating this spaciousness around it, right? Kind of like, I found it very sadness. Thank you, Jill, yes. So that that um, spaciousness around the sadness, not resisting it, not pushing it away, but just like, oh, there's sadness, right? Like, because a lot of times as we stop resisting it, it's almost like it transmutes or maybe not, maybe it'll stay as sadness there. But then it can make space for the gentle joy as you have the thought, I'm on the right path. Valerie saying, avoiding vulnerability and insecurity. So choosing to feel safe under my soul strength. Beautiful. I love that. Yes. Yeah, the image I got for me, it was almost like I was meditating under, because there was a lot of clouds in my emotional landscape right now. Um and so it was almost like I was seeing the clouds, but then I was like, I was sitting in, in meditative pose, not trying to avoid them, but just kind of like noticing them there. And it was almost like my soul was like, like, it's okay. It's okay that it's there. Like, it's okay that I have the dark clouds right now. Like, it's okay. Like nothing's gone wrong, right? It was like, there's nothing wrong. And it's like, the more like I could be with like, oh, it's okay that they're there, the more kind of space that started to happen. And then some of those other feelings of like lovingness or feeling loving or started to naturally emerge. That's really important, right? That's when we move from overcoming from like, okay, I have dark clouds, I hate them. Let's bring in the light clouds. But it's like, no, like that's what creates, you know, this, this drawing. I, I literally couldn't draw this, but there's our soul. And so what I had seen this morning, 
it looks like like my little stick figure has legs of hearts, legs made out of hearts. But it was like the clouds, you know, here before was this like clouds, clouds, clouds. I'm overwhelmed, right? Like all over. Love of my soul can't get through because I've got, a, I mean, it can, it's me, right? It's me that's kind of like blocking this with these clouds. But then it was this, like, as we do this process, what happens is space. This is supposed to be the purple, the aura, your aura. There's spaciousness that happens. Because remember what I said, I don't know if you caught it, that our soul has the capacity to create sacred space. It's like a, a superpower. It can create sacred space. That's different than holding space. Oh, I'm going to hold space for you. That can be very heavy. But our soul, because the universe is infinite and our soul is connected to the source, so our soul is infinite, so it can create infinity, it can create space. So when we remember to lean into our soul, we, we have the capacity. So then what happens is we start to create space. So the clouds might still be there, but there's space. And then we develop this strong energy field and we can receive the love from our soul and we're loving our soul and we can radiate love even as the clouds are there. I really believe this is part of being in the world and not of it. It's like we're walking through the world, the clouds are there. We're not repressing them. We're not resisting them. We're not judging them. We're not drowning in them. <laughs> and we can still radiate love. This is a little illustration that probably my five-year-old drew about emotional sovereignty, right? It's like, and so for you taking the action steps that you're being guided to take, whatever it is, it's like, oh yeah, I have these clouds, but I can continue to take act steps forward. And of course, if you need support, many times we need support. We need another human who's done this over and over and over to, to not to do it for us, but to remind us, right? To create that space, to make it easier for us to keep connecting to our soul and keep doing this. So I want to read Jill saying, sadness is my other T. I have a sad part and I love it. Yes. So that's your other sentence. I have a sad part and I love that sad part, right? Or right now, I, I know I have frustrated parts with the situation and it's just like I was trying so hard to get to this place of like I'm not frustrated this is fine this is great it's okay that this is happening but that just is not I don't that's not true for me so it was really like I have frustration about this and that's okay that I have frustration about it like I don't have to fix the frustration it's like it can it can come along with me and not take over my whole world either, right? I can hold the fact that I'm frust I have frustration about a certain situation I'm in right now, and also the truth of, and in some way that I cannot fully understand, that's exactly how it's meant to be right now. Right? It's like there's some divine order I don't understand. I can hold both. I don't have to, they don't have to fight with each other because that's what was happening. I was really trying to make it like, it's okay. I'm not frustrated. It's great. But I was, I am. <laughs> but then that could make me feel like, oh, what did I do wrong? How did I get in the situation? But it was like, no, both can be true that it's in divine order. And I have a part that's really frustrated with this and I don't have to resist it. Michelle, mine were storm clouds building up to release all the emotions through my tears. Oh, beautiful. Resisting love. But what I want to feel is love. I'm still integrating everything that I experience. Of course, Michelle. Yes. I love that. Resisting love. But what I want is love. That was similar to at some point I got to that with me when I let myself feel feel the fear of feeling over responsible. Eventually, I got to this place of like, well, I really what I want to feel is loving. I don't want to feel like I'm rescuing people. I want to feel loving. And then it was like my soul, like right at the end said, like, you also want to receive their love. Like you're also pushing away people's love. It was like, let yourself be loved, which was very interesting. It reminds me of that, Michelle. Jojo, avoid feeling rejection, therefore less than. My soul is accepting all my thoughts and feelings. The clouds I see in the sky will remind me I am loved and cherished and accepted accept my feelings in the now. Yes. 
right? It's like you, it's so interesting. We reject ourselves because we're afraid to feel rejection, which then makes us feel more rejected, right? And it's like, yeah, thank you so much for that, Jojo. So I want to continue with our thing. We're almost at the end. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I'm going to, please, somebody say, yes, I can see you in the chat but I'm gonna keep going because for whatever reason, there seems to be some delay before that comes up. So um, next page here. So career emotional, emotional sovereignty views your challenging emotions as fuel. Because this is the thing, of course your soul sees positive emotions. And I'm, I'm, I wanna keep putting positive and challenging in quotes because it's all, perspective, right? But for the sake of this conversation, of course, feeling happy and joyful and abundant and loving feels amazing. And your soul uses that as fuel. It's not that your soul doesn't like positive emotions. Of course it does. But I'm talking about the challenging ones because that's the ones that we, our humanness, our ego resists. So sees, but in career emotional sovereignty, all our challenging emotions are fuel. One, they cultivate compassion for yourself and the world. That is not to be minimized. It is way easier to be compassionate towards others than it is towards ourselves. It really is, right? So to cultivate compassion for yourself, that is mastery. That is, you know, people think like ascended masters like Buddha or Jesus, like they just didn't feel anything. Like they were just you know, Jesus chose to be, you know, to go through that initiation of the crucifixion, right? For lots of reasons. And it wasn't like, he was like, all right, I feel nothing, right? It's like, he had to go through a lot of training, not to become a robot that felt nothing, but to be able to, to willingly go through that and have compassion for himself and compassion for all the other people, both the people that were so heartbroken that it was happening and the people that were cheering it on and saying, yes, you know, crucify him and all of that. So we need to understand this is not a little thing. Our parts can minimize it like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to love myself. That's so nice. No, it's a big thing. Okay. And then to strengthen your energy body so that you can hold more of your soul's light. This happens every time you feel a challenging emotion and you lean into your soul for help. So this process, when you do that, not only does it build compassion for yourself and for the world, but you literally, it's like, this is what my soul was showing me or the oversoul. I keep saying the soul because I knew it wasn't just my soul. It was the soul of everyone who will ever, ever hear these teachings. It's like, Every time we feel bad and we just want to turn away from our soul, that is like normal because remember our ego structure doesn't want us to connect with our soul. So it's very radical and revolutionary for us to instead turn towards our soul when we're feeling like this. It is the most courageous thing in that moment to say, I'm going to turn this way. And by the way, this is why we hire coaches and therapists and all of those amazing wellness professionals, right? Because for me, when I started therapy back when I was 25 in 2000, when I first saw my first therapist, I was in this place. I had enough, enough light, enough knowing to know I need help and reach out to my first therapist at that time, right? And so now with career and everything, it's like, yes, we can do it on our own and you might need help and that's okay. And whether that's me, because I would love to help you, you know, you have that free breakthrough consult that you can schedule or it's someone else, that is fine. But maybe your soul's guidance first is saying, hey, I am here for you. I love you so much. But I know right now you need a human helper to help facilitate this journey. And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so, but every time we do that, every time we do that, we do it, we do it, we do it, we strengthen our energy body. It's like this barrier becomes more fluid, right? There's a, a, a like a relationship between our soul, a give and take, give and take, we get more, we start to anchor heaven on earth. 
That's why people can then like, you can walk into a space and you elevate it just by your presence. Not, you don't even have to teach anything. Okay, I just realized. Okay, thank you, Sophia. I was like, I hope somebody's not saying we can't see anything. <laughs> thank you, Sophia. Okay. Okay, I already showed you the illustrations. Okay, and we talked about that. I'll talk a little bit more about it as I close the class, but I'm just looking. Okay, so this is the practice. It, it looks like a lot of steps just because I'm trying to write it all out. And we did this together. First thing is you set the intention to become emotionally sovereign. Remember, energy follows intention. Intention is everything. So if you, even if all you take from this class is, I want to become emotionally sovereign. I understand that that doesn't mean that I'm a robot that doesn't feel anything. It doesn't mean that I just feel positive all the time. I want that. I want to be able to not be afraid of my emotions and continue to share my medicine. So that's the first step. Second step is remember then that your soul uses your emotional landscape as fuel. So when you're feeling bad, it's very normal for our brain to be like, I'm feeling bad. This is bad. I'm falling behind. I'm not on my path. What is wrong with me? This is slowing me down. Why do I have to go through this? All of this stuff. But if in that moment you can remember, wait a minute, that's my ego talking, my ego structure. It's very convincing. But actually my soul doesn't see this as a problem. My soul sees this as fuel. So that's step number two. If you can just remember those two things, I want to become emotionally sovereign. And when I'm feeling challenging emotions, my soul literally can use this as fuel. Fuel for what? To share my medicine, to, for me to awaken from the false matrix and ascend, right? Even just remembering that can start to shift you. Oh, this is not a problem. Because one of the ego's most powerful ploys to keep us stuck is to convince us that we're stuck, that we're going backwards, that we're doing it wrong. So then, so, so when you remember these two things, my soul uses it as fuel, my ego is going to want to use this to block me from sharing my medicine. So if you remember those things, those are huge steps. It's like, oh my gosh, okay. Now, beyond that, you can also bring the palms of your hands to your heart, breathe mindfully, that's supposed to say, and ask your soul to help you create sacred space in your emotional landscape. And it could literally be, please soul, help me create space here. Space, space, space. I sometimes literally just say that. Space, space, spaciousness, space. Okay. If there is an ascended master, now, of course, I know some of you connect with angels and spirit animals and enlightened ancestors and all other things. Call on whomever. I, but, and I really want to encourage you to call on the ascended masters because, like I said, they literally mastered this. They had to go through this. So, who better to ask for help than a divine being who was a human before, who had an ego structure, who felt all the challenging things and knows how challenging it was and has so much compassion and understanding and patience for you. So I really want to encourage you to call an ascended, on an ascended master. And then, so again, so this is all kind of like more advanced, more advanced, more advanced, more advanced. If at first all you do is those first steps, that's totally fine. But if you're at a place where like, okay, I can do all this. And then I'm really going to identify what is the emotion that's causing me the most challenge right now? And what's the thought that's creating that emotion? And then I can, once I identify that, I can ask my soul for help. Either they'll choose the emotion, your soul will choose the emotion or the thought, or maybe your soul will, and I should have written this on here. I apologize. Your soul might say, no, you know what? It's not time to choose another emotion right now. I just want to help you be with this one. I want to help you create space and not get overwhelmed by it and just be with it. So I know it seems like a lot of steps by like, literally, I just wanted to really break it down, but this is takes, I mean, seconds, right? Just setting the intention. I want to become emotionally sovereign so that I can share my soul's medicine in the purest, most 
courageous expression. I'm feeling crappy right now, but I remember my soul uses this as fuel. It's not a problem. My ego wants to convince me that this is going to block me or hold me back. Maybe that's all you do. Or maybe you then go and you're like, bring your hands to your heart and just ask your soul, help me to create spaciousness. Because your soul is a sacred space creator, not a holder, a creator. Because once you have space, it's like this drawing, right? Then it's like the clouds are there, but you have space. And then there's, you know, in in April, when I have the, ma the master class, it'll go more specifically into this, like choosing a um, the thoughts create your emotion and what thoughts you want to think and all of that. But you can start this already. Right? We did the meditation already. And as I said, you can schedule a free 60-minute breakthrough consult with me if you would like to do that. It is my honor and joy and privilege to um, have that conversation with you. And it will it, it can be about anything we talked about in this masterclass or not specifically about this, but really the theme of it is helping you understand, okay, what's blocking me? What's holding me back? What's slowing me down from sharing my soul's medicine at its highest expression? And please know that it is not a test. It is not a place of judgment or where I'm going to be like, oh, you're not doing this or you're not doing that. You know, we start with a, a simple invocation meditation. And I just ask you these really thoughtful questions so that I can diagnose, right? So I can be like, oh, okay. These are the questions. Again, not a testing question, just to get clarity on your situation. And then I will help you see, okay, you know what? I know you think this is the problem, but actually this is what I see. Is This is it. This is just what needs healing. And this is how you can heal that. Okay. And then if, and, and if I feel like my coaching program is a good fit for you, I'll share that as well. We'll have a conversation about that. Okay. Um, I'll, Oh, yes. Remember that I will. Um, when I send the replay link, I'll send the link to the breakthrough session. I think I have maybe like three slots left in March. So you can see that. And I will also put that link. If you're like, I want to do it. And you know, already I'm putting it right there. Okay. So Let's take a few breaths. This was a lot. Thank you so much, everyone here, everyone watching the replay. I know that some of you could just not be here live, but I know that you are engaged and you're contributing in your own space and you're taking in what everybody said and that that's helping you so much. And everyone here who shared your comments and everyone here, even if you didn't share, I know that you're, we're all co-creating this. And so I understand, you know, how much courage it takes just to even look at this, right? Just to even like go inside and look at our emotional landscape and look at the emotions that are hard to, to see and just to, yeah, to hold a mirror up, but to do it with so much love and so much compassion. And the more we can do this together, the more we make this a normal thing, the easier it gets, not just for you, but for humanity, for the collective Right, we're doing this not just for ourselves, but for everyone. <laughs> so glad, Valerie. So I want to pull some cards. And I have, of course, the Magical Cauldron with beautiful Ishelle birthing herself. She's birthing herself. I mean, how perfect is that? <laughs> and um, But I want to pull a card from the Soulful Woman deck. Oh, I want to also remind you, next week is the Mother Mary masterclass and it's going to be all about connecting with the soul of your business what is the soul of your business or your career it's the divine blueprint i talked about that in today's youtube live the divine blueprint of your business i mean isn't that amazing your business has a divine blueprint your your career does and so mother mary is going to help us next week talk to it like what are the things your business wants you to do more of wants you to do less of what are the, and the card that came up in today's YouTube live was about simplifying. And I just really heard the soul of all of our businesses, all of our careers, even if your business is not up and running yet, it has a divine blueprint, 
right? And, and it was like, simplify, be efficient, flow, play, joy. So I'm so excited to have Mother Mary help us both strengthen our connection to it so we can hear it and then hear it and then kind of hear like, oh, this is what you want me to do more of. This is what you want me to do less of. So many times we're doing way too many things, actually. You're welcome, Michelle. So, okay, let's pull the card. I hope to see you at the Mother Mary class next week. And that you do get a replay. I pull an Oracle card for everyone in that class and you get the replay for ever, I guess, as long as replays exist. Okay, this is the one. Beautiful, love-based reality. I am soul nurtured when I surround myself with friends and family who support a love-based reality. Look at this. I feel like this is us when we allow our soul to love us right i feel like this is like you, your soul is loving you like this is your you're carrying your soul's light into the world so beautiful all right my dear so i'm going to pull a name and so the way this works i put everybody's name in here if you're not live you're not eligible. Sorry. <laughs> so, and if I pull it and you are here live, then you will receive a free channeled reading from me. I will email it to you as an audio file and I'll send you the pictures of the Oracle cards as well. And it'll be specifically around this, around your emotional career sovereignty. Thank you, Jojo. I'm so glad. All right. So let's see. Okay. Whoops. Do I count that? <laughs> let's see. Let's I was going to say a little prayer. All right, beautiful Divine Mother, who, what name is meant to come out? Here, closing my eyes, getting a thing out. Deb Randasso, are you here? Deb, 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 Deb. No, Deb, I'm sending you so much love. <laughs> Sophia. Oh, I think Sophia had to leave early. Oh, Sophia, I'm sending you so much love. <laughs> but this is the only way I can do it. It's like you have to be here. I don't pull it. So. Okay. Kimberly still. Oh, my goodness. We are just going to keep it. No, Kimberly's not here. I'm sending you so much love, Kimberly. Right. Michelle Hannick. Michelle, you are here, I believe. I see your name. Can you? Yay. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone, for congratulating Michelle. Thank you so much, Michelle, for being here. And I must have your email. I'm assuming it'll be that it's the email. I always forget to say this part. And it's I'm going to go with the email you registered with for the class, the master class. But if there's another email that uh, you want me to use, then email me because I'm assuming you have my email, but I don't know if I have your email. So Michelle, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you everyone. And I'm so excited. It's always such a joy to connect with you. I will send the replay. If you know anyone who would be interested in the replay this week, uh, feel free to send them the link. And um, thank you so much. I'm excited. I'm about to start a dragon class in a minute. I think, Suzanne, you will be there with me. I don't know if anybody else, but mm -hmm. starting a whole year awesome journey with the beautiful highest seraphim, the beautiful dragons. All right. Bye, everyone. See. Oh, you will, Jojo. Awesome. All right. Bye, everyone. See ya. Thank you so much.